What's going on, everybody? This is your boy Gotti on the Gotti's World Podcast Season 3. And this interview is very special to me. I'm going to end um, this year off. And by the time you guys see this, it'll be the top of the year. So happy New Year's to everybody. But I'm going, I have one of the most beautiful women that I know. Um, she runs my household. She is the motor that keeps everything going in this house or in my house. Um, she motivates me. She motivates uh, the people around her. And it just so happens that this woman here has opened her business. It's fine. I've seen it come to uh, manifestation. She's grinded. Her journey was crazy, but she's here. And I'm just so happy that I can be her first on camera interview. And I'm speaking about Miss Shatoria Woods. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? What's going on? I'm nervous. What you nervous for? <laughs> what you nervous for? You know, this is you know me. This is different for me. You know how I am. Why is it so different? You make me nervous. This, I, I always, I, I should make done. you nervous. I've seen the questions. I, 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 I'm trying to get ready. <laughs> Don't be nervous. You know I'm going to take care of you. I know. But the, you are the owner of Bella B's Fitness. I've seen so much. I've seen the hard work that you've put in. I've seen the um, the struggles. I've seen the the ideas that just come and pop. They just pop. And you bring them all to life. So, like I said, I don't even want to waste no more time. But I do want everybody, my audience, to know you, the personal you. Because everybody see what they see on um, social media. Uh, certain people know you, but I know you. And it's not often that I say that to uh, my guests, but I know you. You better. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I definitely do. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to start. From the past, everything in the middle, and what you got going on in the future, including me. Okay. <laughs> Stop being so the, soft-spoken. The, the best topic. Stop being so soft-spoken. Talk up. <laughs> All right. Well, basically how we start this is, where are you originally from? Um, I was born in Harvey. Uh, um, Harvey. Harvey World. I moved to Park Forest. I'm a suburban girl. I've been in the South suburbs all my life. Okay. Okay. So, give me some details about how you were, how you were brought up. Some some of your upbringings. Um, I was brought up with both my parents. Um, they were married. They are now. But um, both my parents. Um, I had two siblings that also lived with me. I have um, two older sisters. And then I also have uh, two other older brothers. So in total, it's six of us, but only three of us in the house with my mom and dad. Okay. So what um, are the relationships as far as with your sisters, your brothers, and uh, mom, dad? It's family. Um, I'm pretty close to everybody. Um, of course, my mom, my dad, we, I guess how I put that. Um, we're all close. We all have our stories. We all have our bonds all you know our relationships just normal average family what about um well do you have do you feel like you have um a solid foundation with your family um when you say solid foundation means did it was everything did you have that balance did you have that balance between that time with your mom the time with your dad and the brothers and sisters were they was at where everybody close and one knit? Um, like I said, it's your average family. Um, we had, like I 
like I said, we had three of us that were in house, and then I do have um, older siblings that we didn't grow up with. So mm-hmm. um, I do have older older sibling that I'm not like super close with. But mm-hmm. I, like I said, I feel like that's just like cabbage, the average family, especially when you're blended. You know, um, as far as my mom and dad, I grew up with them. My mom, she worked a lot. Mm-hmm. My dad, you know, he was he worked a lot too, but he was more so of the um, affectionate type. You know, he it was kind of like a swap. You know, my mom, she was the hardworking one. She wasn't as affectionate, but, you know, she gives her love in different ways. And she's right. the same thing with my dad. So, I mean, like I said, it's just an average family. Okay. What are some of the morals that um, that your father, uh, since he was the, you know, loving one, and then what were some of the morals that you picked up from your mom since she was the hardworking one that you, that uh, instilled in you, that they instilled in you? Um. My dad was more so of the person where he allowed you to learn your lessons in life, not kind of like hinder you from it, but, you know, allow you to learn to grow. Right. Um, my dad taught me just about um, love, just being patient, um, being understanding. My mom, she was more so of the strength. She was more of the hustler, like, I'm going to make it. I'm going to do what I got to do. I love you. But, hey, you know, there's a thing to still that has to be taken care of. So I think that they both kind of instilled that in me because, I, in a sense, I feel like that's how I am now. Mm. Mm-hmm. Very affectionate, very loving. I can't, I can't help but love. That's yes, just who you, I am. yes, you are. <laughs> I get, I get all of it. I get all of it. The kids too. Yeah, um, the, they definitely. Well, we ain't talking about them. Okay. Then, <laughs> uh, we don't talk about them. And then, like I said, my mom, she's hard working. I'm the same way. I'm driven. If I, if I want to do something, I'm going to at least try it. Yeah. See how it works. Uh, I try to stay very motivated, and I also just try to motivate and encourage the people around me. Also. Which brings us to Bella B's cardio. Dance fitness, mm-hmm. that's the, or should I say Bella B's fitness? I say Bella B's fitness. Bella B's fitness. It's, it's majority cardio dance, yes, but it's hit workout also. How did that idea come about? Oh, um, well, I'm trying to think. Did I get fired first? Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was working at a job, um, and. I got that. And then I was like, okay, well, what's next? You know, um, I always knew that I loved dance. Um, and I had just kind of stepped into fitness uh, because I was training with Gabby. Shout out to Gabs. Shout out, Gab. Um, I was training with her. And I'm like, you know, I'm enjoying this. But then, you know, I also had my kids. So I'm like, well, what can I do? You know, to make it fun. So, as you know, I incorporated the kids, and I'm like, we're going to do Mommy and Me Fitness, where we can kind of get the kids up, moving, get them active, but also give the moms kind of like an excuse as to why, you know, no excuse as to why they can't work out. Right. So, right. now it's a win-win situation. We're bonding. We're burning calories. You know, it, it's, it's the ultimate thing for, you know, parents and kids. Mm-hmm. Well, that ain't last that long, because don't nobody want to be around their kids. <laughs> why they work it out? No, it, why they you dance? Know, like, yeah. You know, it was okay, but it was like, maybe this can't work every week. You know, so I went back to the drawing board. Um, mm-hmm. I took a break, as you know, and I came back. Um, what was it? May? No, I lied. I think it was March 2019. I came back and I'm like, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right. Let me, you know, step um, step into something new. And that's when I started doing my um, Monday Madness and my Wild Out Wednesday classes. And mm-hmm. we here now. So that's talk about I'm some of the that 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 in between. That in between of figuring out, I'm leaving a job. Mm-hmm. Well, job I, I got me. the job left you. <laughs> <laughs> the job left you, and you had to figure it out. You came up with mommy and me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you were going through the motions. You figured that out, um, and then it didn't work. Mm-hmm. It didn't work. It didn't work. So you had to go back. Like, what was that feeling? What was that? Well. One thing I, I know I always tell you is that a lot of times we have a plan A, but we also have to understand that we have to have a plan B because that plan A may not work out, you know, and that's kind of how it was. So did I feel defeated? No, because that's still something that I still can do. But it was kind of like, okay, let's pick up the pieces and let's try again. Just because this didn't work, let's try this. And was it hard? Did I go through the um, emotions of feeling like, okay, well, dang, what am I supposed to do now? What's next? Yes, but it, it's the moment where you just take a step back and you revamp and say, Okay, well, what about this? Let me let me try something new. And if you you know me, I don't like to do things that everybody else do. So it's kind of yes. like if I'm gonna come in, let me come in with a banger. Let me just try something that's really gonna, yes, you I know, do. possibly take off. And mm-hmm. then that's what happened. So like I said, I got released from my job and then turned around in June 2019. I hired myself. Mm. And we've been there since then. Both, 
on Rick Ross, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Were you um not being in the box? I I know for a fact that you are difficult. And when I say difficult, that means nobody can actually put you in a box. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you can do so many things. You and you have the ability to grow. As I as I tell you all the time, like you got this. You you grow. You like you one of a million. Mm-hmm. So were you always like that creative person to where ideas will come and you would just put them into action? I was. Say I've I've always told you I I feel different. Um, yes. I don't feel like everybody else, and for some people it may sound crazy, but for me that's what I feel like. I don't feel like the typical person. Now whatever that typical person is, I don't know, but I just don't feel like it. Um, so when it comes to anything, whether it's my business, whether it's you, whether it's the kids, you know, I, I try to do my best or just try to just just try to put my best foot forward. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Now, it's something that I do want to get established, and we're going to figure this out so we ain't got to even do this. We ain't got to do this at home or anything. This show quiet thing. We not going to do this. Yes, we are. This show quiet thing. When you was in school. Okay, so that's where I know some of your out, you know, your um, outgoing. You are are outgoing person. Mm -hmm. I do know that. And um, when you were in show quiet i feel like from what you described to me you were just a tree and like you know one of them little tumbleweed things that just go past you just you just go around so what so we can get this established what were you doing in show quiet show quiet we sing and we dance i wouldn't leave vocals but i was getting it you know i went from the back to the front you know what i'm saying it's like i lost my job i hired myself like i moved up <laughs> it took some time <laughs> i even had a solo for folks but it wasn't that good but you know but that's what it was it was show choir where we sing and we dance we travel um it was a lot of um, creative people a lot of talented people um as a matter of fact kelly shout out to kelly and Angel, um, that's why I originally met Kelly. Kelly was in show choir, but she was a lead vocal. She was cold. But um, that's where I started. I, I feel like where I was able to let my personality go. It's kind of like a space where you don't have to be yourself. You know, you're performing. You're, you're showing out, you know, and you, you're just enjoying yourself. And for me, I think that was big because not only did it allow me to build relationships, it allowed me to be myself. It allowed me to even not be myself and be able to be out of character travel you know meet people so no i was not a tumbleweed <laughs> i was in there i can show you some youtube videos <laughs> oh oh my god this, this still is in a way this is a this is a dream to me and we were supposed to do it before but i feel like timing is everything mm-hmm. and even though uh we both know we both have been through man mm-hmm. shit and we know timing is everything so what made you feel like this time it was the time to get Bella B's actually going and find a home for it? I didn't decide at the time. God decided at the time. Mm. Um, I'm, I wasn't ready, and I'm not even going to 100% now say I'm ready uh, 100%, but what he has for me is for me, and that's kind of where I'm at. Um, Everywhere I go, I've been pushed out. And not pushed out as, as meaning people are pushing me out, but meaning that my business has continued to grow. You know, I started mm-hmm. a nutrition shop, a focus nutrition shout out to Brandon and Christine. Shout and out. We need to utilize their space for my classes. They mm-hmm. even, you know, assisted me with, girl, you got to do membership, you got to do this, you know. And I took that piece with me and I moved on because I, I outgrew that space. You know, we had over 20 women in the nutrition shop how the I mean imagine just half of this and mm-hmm. it's a room for the women trying to dance around a nutrition bar you know that for me was like wow they're really determined but then it made me feel like dang girl you must be doing it for them you got to be some you got some here, you know and nobody's yeah. complaining um and then I outgrew that space uh you know I moved to um the venue shout out to the venue um I went there but unfortunately that didn't you know last too long which was out of my hand mm-hmm. um and then I moved to 
to Miss Davenport space in downtown Park Forest. Mm -hmm. um, I went there, but like I said, I continued. I feel like I was continuously being pushed out. We ran out of parking because other establishments <laughs> and places were built. And then my members was late for class because they didn't have space. You know, it, it was just a lot. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe God is telling me that it's time to move. And you know me, I'm like, I ain't ready to move. You know, I, right. I, it was a fear because I don't want to fail. But not only not only is it that I don't want to fail, how do I move? What, what mm -hmm. do I do? This is a lot of responsibility that I'm not quite sure that I'm ready for. You know, but I just took a step out on faith because once again, I, I don't think this was my decision. It was more so God telling me it was time to move. Mm. When it clicked for me, like, I, cause I've seen the whole, you know, behind the scenes and how everything got, you know, put together and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That moment for me was the fundraiser. Mm -hmm. When I actually got to see you lead, you were in front and center. You lead and you put this whole thing together. You and you know your assistants and things like that. Shout out, shout out to Naomi, shout out to April, um, and everybody who contribute. Um, that was the moment to where I actually got to sat back, sit back, look, and see like, damn, this, yeah, this is her. She in her element. Like, how did what was that day like for you? Because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how it's going to fall in place. Remind you, the weather was horrible. But, like, prior to it, they were saying the weather would be horrible. So yeah. I'm afraid. I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, we had issues with fenders and everything. And I'm like, God, I don't know. But we just going to, you know, we just going to let it happen. And when we got there, everything was amazing. Um, everybody showed out. Shout out to Leslie from Ivy League Fitness. Um, she assisted and um, hosted the class for me. Um, Rashonda Step, she hosted the class for me. So many people came through for me just off the roof, just supporting, you know, and being there. And I, I really appreciate that. Um, everything went really good. You know, it was not only about me, even though it was a building fundraiser, they were supporting a lot of other black owned businesses. We had a lot of other vendors that were black owned businesses that were able to be put out there and be, you know, supported. Um, so the, the event went absolutely amazing. What is the difference between Shatoria and Bella? I'm going to get paid for this. Um, you know this. I told you. I tell you this all the time. I'm going to get paid for this shit. Well, I think Shatoria is more the wife, the mom, the sister, the sibling. The, you know, that that's me. Y'all know when I'm at home, I'm just, I'm just silly. I just, you know, like I said, the love heart. But I also feel like that kind of goes into Bella because Bella is the motivated person, the determined person, the person who inspires even sometimes when she's probably not feeling inspired but you can't help but motivate and encourage because somebody you know somebody needs that and i mm. and, um that's the business owner the hustler side of me i think that's more so than Bella is. the level of truth um i feel like now you you let me back up your purpose do you feel like right now God has you walking in your purpose or do you feel like it's something else? I feel like God has me working, uh, walking in my purpose. Uh, I, my purpose isn't about me though. You know, my, my purpose is for other people. I think that fulfilling like, others. Fulfilling, yeah. Fulfilling other people, motivating, encouraging other people. Um, especially in the place that I'm at right now in my life. For me to have so many amazing women who support and that follow me and believes in me. And it's not, it's one thing when somebody just believes in you and supporting you, but they are real like riders. Like, yeah. my members, yes, they, they are, are real like riders. But I'm like, I'm going here. They're like, okay, we there. You know, right. if I was to be like, girl, Irma acted crazy, they like, I'm on my way to your house. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they like, they real. <laughs> they real. And it's, it's, it's so genuine and it's so pure. And the women yes. are just so amazing. Um, so I feel like my purpose is. Bellabee's fitness. I feel like my purpose is you and my kids. Mm. I just feel like that's what my purpose is. Okay, let's go back to this level of truth thing. Okay. That level of truth when uh, that jump of fear and then started to be a boss. Mm -hmm. how, how fearful was that jump? Because you were true. You were truthful when you said, "I wanted to 
I wanted to do this. God, I wanted to. You were truthful with him at the, at you know, when you had that conversation with him. I seen. You know what I mean? You, the nights that, you know, we lay down and you pray and things like that and we pray. Um, I've seen it and I've heard it. How fearful was that jump? Because not everybody makes that jump into, because they want that secureness. Instead of just going back to go get another job. I still feel like I'm taking the jump. It might sound crazy, but it's kind of like you get one clip here and another clip here, and you about to jump, and like, in the middle, they pause the film, and you like, stuff right there. Mm. That's where I feel like I'm at. I feel like I haven't completely got there yet. I feel like I'm still in the process of my jump because it's not it's not completed for me. Like, I feel mm. like I, I haven't completed that part yet. So I'm, I'm still, right now, I feel like I'm still taking that leap, honestly. So do you feel like right now everything is aligning together? with um what what does it take to open a business your experience (laughs) your experience um it takes it takes a lot of self-motivation i'm gonna say that first off because if you it's one thing for other people to believe in you but you have to believe in yourself Mm -hmm. um and i think that's the hardest thing for me is that it's not that i don't believe in my myself i'm fearful of what could go wrong or what could happen because I'm afraid of failing and I, I, I don't want to fail mm-hmm. you know especially when it's something that I'm ex- I've, there's nothing that has happened in my life outside of you guys where I feel like it, I'm extremely passionate about and mm-hmm. if this didn't work out it would like I would feel defeated you know so um I, don't, I got to talking and I lost my my point but that's it. <laughs> get out your head girl get out your head no um so boom what is your biggest flaw and what is your biggest fear my biggest flaw about you because when when, when Um, I feel like a flaw for me, sometimes I can get complacent. Um, when I get overwhelmed, sometimes I shut down because it's a lot. It's a lot for me. And I think that's one thing that I've recently learned about myself through this whole process of, as you say, becoming a boss. Um, I've become, I, I, a lot of times I shut down. It's kind of like I got to regroup and get myself together. And one thing that I'm trying to learn is that you can't always shut down. Sometimes you have to take things full on. So that I think that will be a flaw of mine right now that I'm starting to right, right. pick up. I'm always fucking up something. Don't worry about it. I'm always fucking up something. There we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm always fucking up something. My bad. Did it again. Can you hear me? I think it did it again. Hold on. Technical difficulties. You know this guy. You know what I'm saying? Well, this is that one. Can you hear me? I'm back on. I'm back good. I'm back good. Can you hear me? All right, cool. Um, fear. When that when that comes into your mind, how do you block it out? How do you block it out to where you like? I gotta keep on going. I gotta keep doing this. I gotta. I gotta move on. I gotta push through this thing. Time. Time. Time pushes me because at the end of the day, I feel like. Everything is on a time frame. Even a lot of moves and stuff I'm making right now, I feel like it's time. So it's like, do I just sit here in fear or do I keep moving forward to hit whatever that goal is? Because if not, then I'm just wasting time. And that's one thing I don't want to do is waste time. I feel that. In this cardio dance fitness world that you created yourself and for other women, what do you consider your role is? A motivator. That's, that's just what I am. Um, a lot of people try to say, well, girl, you 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 can be a personal trainer. You're this or you're this type of instructor. No, I, I just feel like I'm a motivator. That's just kind of what it is. I, I sit and I talk. I motivate women. Because um, a lot of things that we do, even with the women from the um, 
from just being a member and coming to class or even doing the 30 day challenge mm -hmm. i let them know all the time that this just isn't a physical change this is mental and this is emotional too a lot of people feel like when you work out it's just oh you know i'm losing weight but no you're losing weight but you're gaining confidence you know you're you picked up a new habit and now this is a way to clear your mind from the things that you've been through whether it's relationships whether it's kids whether it's your job whatever it is um so like you said i don't like to be in a box yeah. so i'm a motivator that's what i do who are some who motivates you? With I guess it really depends on what is it. Life, uh, fitness influences, like who gets your juices flowing? In my in my personal life, what motivates me is you and my kids. That's that's my motivation. Aww. Jake, we got some tissue. What a tissue at, Jake? I'm what a tissue at, bro? I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> But in all actuality, y'all do because it's like I don't want to let y'all down or I don't want to fail and then I'm putting more on your plate. You know, mm -hmm. you already have things that you have to do and then I was like, okay, well, these are my problems. Take these two, you know, or the kids. Right. Even with this process, um, you know, the kids seeing me in the studio, they seeing me working and seeing everything I'm doing. They're hanging with mommy and it's like I want to be able to hope that, you know, I can motivate them and encourage them. Like, okay, well, I seen this is when mommy started. Me and mommy, we was doing mommy and me and my own mommy got a building, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah, just to see yeah. that, you know, that that motivates me. You know, just to see when the kids come to the studio and they can just run around and just have a ball and they just want to be there. And there's nothing to do, but they just want to be there with me and, you know, and be there and see what I'm doing. So, um you guys motivate me and then outside of that just with business at the end of the day i tell my members this all the time and i, I mean it when i say it is that they motivate me some days i don't i don't want to work out you know some days i'm just like i don't want to i don't want to do anything you know we might get half class today you know sometimes i feel like that but then i'm like but they need me but not only do they need me i need them you know what i'm saying because as much as i don't want to move you know, they encourage me. They they push me to be like, all right, I'm about to come up with this. I'm about to do this and that. You know, so my my members encourage me. Also, they they motivate me. Also, personal question. Personal question. I gotta ask you. When was the last time you actually freed your mind? Could you say? I got. To be honest, me freeing my mind majority of the time is me taking a bath and closing the door off from the kids. Other than that, that that is like me freeing my mind. Just having a moment. My car used to be like my safe haven. Um, but that's really the only time. I, it's just like a moment where the house is still, the kids are quiet, and I could just kind of let like let my mind rest. Nobody needs me. So. Look, real quick, like I said, the devil is the devil is busy. Can you hear me, bro? Oh, oh, hold on, people. Hold on. The Scottish World Podcast shit happens. Black people shit. You know how this go. Y'all know how this go. We back on. That's All right, cool. We good. We good. We good. I got to stop moving and shit like that. I'm, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. Can you hear me? Because it's, uh, it's kind of breaking up. It's still popping? Mm -hmm. Still popping a little bit? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I think it's the Yeah, it might be the court. We good? We like okay, cool. When was the most fulfillment fulfillment moment that you had thus far? With business. Yeah, with the business. Signing my lease. Mm. <laughs> it was fulfilling. Signing it was, day. It was fulfilling. It was fulfilling, but it after that it gets stressful. But it it's, it comes with <laughs> it. You know what I'm saying? It comes right. with it being in there and having to get in order, painting, doing. You know, like I I'm I'm in there all the time. Um, but for me, that was fulfilling because I felt accomplished. Like you did that, you know. And I even prior to that, remember you was like, "Well, babe, if you need this or if you need that or you need me to co-sign anything you need," and I kept telling you, everybody around me, I'm like, "I want to do it by myself. Mm -hmm. This is big for me. I need mm -hmm. to do this for myself." So the fact that I was able to do it for myself, for me, that was fulfilling because I I've never done that before. Yeah, yeah. The balance act. You have a hell of a balance act. A hell of a balance act. I seen you cook, have our baby in our hand, also answer the phone, talk about business, also bring me some juice at the same time. Hey, bring me the ketchup. <laughs> bring me the ketchup. Bring me a fork. <laughs> what is that? What is that balance act? You know, what I'm saying being a mother, sister, daughter. Like, how do you do it? I 
I haven't figured it out yet. I don't think I, I don't have it all together, and I think me and you both know that. Shit. Um, I what I me, see for me, I don't, and I know a lot of people around me be like, "Girl, how you do it? I don't know how you do it," and I, I don't personally feel like I have it all together. But then also, that's where you know, one, I either have to take a step back, or two, I have to ask for help. Hey, can you do this? I need you to do this for me because this is too. You know, it becomes a lot for me. You know, and mm-hmm. I think. Sometimes we can learn, we can try to balance, but you just can't, you can't balance everything at one time. Sometimes you need help. So I haven't quite figured it out, but I'm just doing the best that I can do. Personal question. Dealing with me. Woo. Dealing with me. How do you deal with me? A day at a time. <laughs> A little bit of wine. That's how you give them. That's wine. how you go give them. Just a little bit of wine and shit like um, that. I think that just comes with understanding your partner and understanding the person that you're with. Um, I wouldn't even really call it dealing with you mm. um, because we in this for the long run. You're my husband. I'm not settling. I'm not dealing with you. It's just part of the process. I'm supposed to be there for you just like you're supposed to be there for me. So um, I really wouldn't say dealing with you. I just... Like I said, it, it really is a day by day process. We never know what can happen. Things change. You know, we've been in this uh, about to be seven years, and I, you're not the same person that you were when I met you seven years ago, and I'm not the same person I was. So it's like the process of evolving and adjusting over time. Mm. So, mm. good answer. You better answer that way, yeah, goddamn. <laughs> you better answer that way. We on camera, goddamn. You better have it that way. Give me two thing, two things you learned about yourself along this journey that you think that can help women become successful and elevate their brand if they were young coming in two things i've learned about myself well you learned about you learned about business in your journey never depend on other people and always go with your first mind Mm -hmm. and that's one thing i would say um a lot of times, even now, you know, I sometimes I want to become dependent on people, but I have to realize that at the end of the day, this is your brand. This is this is your thing, and you have to do it. You can't wait for other people or wait for confirmation for other people because then it's kind of like, in a sense, you're lending your brand to someone else. But this is yours, and only you really know what you want your brand to be. And when you're outsourcing and asking other people, then it's kind of like it becomes the people's, you know, mm-hmm. thing versus your own support support along along this this ride that you've been riding how many people did you have to to lose or well, now how many people how many people did you lose along this along this ride or you had to let go i've been losing people all my life but, uh, <laughs> through this process i really haven't I really have, haven't had to lose anybody. If anything, I've, I've had more gains than losses. And mm. even in that case, I'm not even really counting the losses because I've gained so much. Um, so I really wouldn't say I've really lost anybody. I Faithfully, I, I pray and I ask God, you know, to have the people in my life that he feels should be in my life, who can help me grow, who can benefit positive energy that needs to be here. You know, mm. so like I said, I've gained so much from that that if I did have a loss, it couldn't have been that big for me not to know you. Damn. Time. Our time. Our time together as husband and wife. Like, it's not too many people are, you know, in our generation right now are, um, well, it's starting to grow now as far as being with Mary. You know what I'm saying? Mary going through things, actually become a business. Everybody say the more relationship goes, but we honestly, me, me and you, we're, we're living it right now. Be nobody I don't want to be nobody relationship goals neither. But but people <laughs> would say like, man, y'all doing this is what this is. You know what I mean? And we actually, once you look at it, we are living it. So could is it a what is give them a little timeline and insight on some of the things that we had to overcome. Two things that you uh, say we had to overcome. And I'll give my two things for you know these. This is for the people. Mm. Only two. Trump. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut the hell. <laughs> um, okay, so for me, I've had to learn two things. Two things I'm really, really learning. Go ahead. Um, for me, the first one is forgiveness. 
I mm. have an issue of forgiving. I mm-hmm. used to, I would say, have an issue of forgiving. Mm-hmm. I, I hold on to a lot of things. Um, a lot of times, like my dad always says this, is let's not go to a place where we can't come back from. Mm. And I live by that. Like, I, it's really hard for me to forgive. So I've had to learn to forgive, whether it's big, whether it's small. You know, I've really had, I've really had to learn how to do that in order to move forward. Mm-hmm. And this is before you, because it's a lot of things you know that you had to deal with, and that you had to take on, mm-hmm. that I've experienced prior. And mm-hmm. then being with you, I've also had to learn how to forgive because you're not perfect. And I'm not saying he crazy or doing nothing crazy, but what I'm saying is that regardless of what it is, you know, sometimes you have to realize that everybody has to grow and it's not on your time and people are not who you want them to be. They are just who they are and you have to be willing to accept that or just move on. So forgiving is one thing. Um, Second, I've learned that I have, I live in a fairy tale in my head. (laughs) I remember I told you (laughs) I was different. Yeah. I have this thing where, like, you're supposed to be this guy that's going to come and bring me flowers every day. You're going to hold me and tell me how beautiful I am. And you're just going to, you know, just be this clingy guy because I'm the, you know, stuff. You know, like, you should. should. Like, uh, that's how I feel like, you know, like, you're going to surprise me all the time. Like, in my head, that's how it was. And not that you aren't that, but it's like I have, I have in my head this type of man that you should be. And that's not fair to you because then it makes it hard for you to be who you are. So I think that's that's another thing. Stop going in with the expectations of what you think a relationship should be based off of what everybody else tells you or what everybody sees. And I think that's another idea of when I'm saying don't let me be your relationship goals because what I go through or what I put up with or how my relationship is, that's beneficial for me in my marriage. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't compare what we are, what you think we are, and just think that we're relationship goals because you have to build your foundation on your relationship. Mine would be... And this is just us. This is just us being transparent. And, you know, I, I want y'all to understand why uh, I'm giving y'all this insight on, you know, my marriage and also my, you know, my, my lovely wife here. And then just me, because I give y'all bits and pieces of me. But this is my, you know, my other half. So I want to just give y'all this insight on what this really is, you know, so because it's not is we everybody shows the wins on Instagram and you know Facebook and shit like that and nobody shows their hard times their struggles or you know what I'm saying never be open to where say man I ain't got this I ain't got this for Christmas I ain't got this for my baby or I, 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 I'm I missing you know what I'm saying my car payment or some shit like that you know what I mean and we've been through all that but my two that I would say that I have learned through this journey even dealing with you dealing with myself dealing with everything that we go through is one is selfishness I have to let I had to let that selfishness go because I've always grew up to be the only child first grandson and things like that and I would always look after me. Even when we said I do, I kind of was guarded of saying, well, shit, I'm I'm, I'm going to work, see what we do. And if it don't turn out right, I'm going to just resort back to me. And instead of, that's the easy way out. You know what I mean? That's the easy way out. And I had to, you know, saying come to grips with myself and say, it ain't no easy way out because... That's what everybody would do. That's what I have seen. That's what I have, you know what I'm saying, been around. And everybody just left. But what if I stayed? And it ain't even for the kids. What if I stayed? What if she became this when I left? You know what I'm saying? What what if I missed out on that blessing because I was in my feelings or in my in my own head and say, well, fuck it, I'm just going to go. So I had to slowly but surely i'm still going through that but i've got better now even what you told me i've let go a lot of my selfishness and it's starting to it's starting to wither away you know what i mean and it makes a difference, and it makes a difference. but and, you know, i'm not i'm still selfish when it comes to my shoes and how i look and things like that so that's just what it's gonna be and i don't think that's gonna change sorry baby mm-hmm. and the other one <laughs> now i'm over here back now you over here back <laughs> and the uh second one is everything is not black and white. Everything is not this way. It's going to go this way. And that that's just what it's going to be. It's not that. Um, I've come to see that what you do is art. 
what I do is art as well because everybody can't do what we do. That's just a plain God gave us a a, a, a talent. He gave us a talent. Made us he made us different. He definitely made me and you different. And now I'm starting to see that we see things in color. Life is life is in a way color. It's not black and white. You know what I mean? That's why we put things, uh, we paint certain things or we have stains on us because that what makes us different. That's what makes us separate. Because if we was all black and white, everybody would look the same. Mm-hmm. And that's not what we are. So that's just something that I had to learn in order to get to this point. Even in my new career, this is what I had to learn. And that's what helps with, you know what I'm saying, us. That was dope for you to say that, though. I know. Just the black and white thing. Because that was always the issue. It was always It was like, always that. Thought, yeah. It was always that. That shows growth. So for me to hear that, like I, I gave you. It's awesome. wisdom. It ain't nothing but wisdom. Okay, come on. I'm getting wise. Come on, sir. You know it. <laughs> you see me. I see you. I want to get your perspective on not only health, because that's what you do, mm-hmm. but mental health mm-hmm. and the energy that you give out to your um uh your your supporters, your mm-hmm. team. Mm-hmm. And even just the world. Mm-hmm. What is your perspective on giving out? You know, what I'm saying just being healthy, being mentally uh, mentally healthy, and also just giving good energy out. Cause right now, the city, the city, the world is it's all fucked up. Um, like I told you, even with just the fitness, I, I tell them all the time: it's not only physical; it's mental. Mental is so important. Depending on how, where we are in the mental space, that can decide what we're going to do for the day, mm-hmm. what we're going to do for the week, if mm-hmm. we want to attend to our kids. You know, like, it's, it's a lot of things that we do, it, it's really all mental. It's all mental. If you decide you want to get up, you know, if you decide you want to go work out, if you decide you're going to give that energy, you know, it's all mental. And I just feel like that mental health is important because it can hold us back from a lot of things, whether it's success, whether it's relationships, whether it's being a good mom, Mm -hmm. whether it's going to your job and giving your all. If your mental isn't right, I feel like nothing, nothing is right. So mental health is very important. And I think especially for, uh, especially for women, not to, well, women and men, don't get me wrong, but just, you know, with women, you tell me all the time, like, don't shit shake in this house without you. Bad. So if mentally Big I'm facts. not in a good space, nothing is getting taken care of. <laughs> you ain't you know, I'm not going to get up and watch those dishes. I'm probably going to be irritated. I'm probably just going to be, you know, in a dark space. And I think that it's important for me to be in a positive um, mindset for my kids. Mm-hmm. You know, because if anything, you you may you need me, but those kids really need me. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Even yeah. for me, and you know, even for you, your mental health is important because you're the you're also the foundation of this house. You know, you you you're the provider. You take care of the me, the kids, the house. So if you're not there, then it ain't right. Big fat. Oh, Jake, we what a tissue at Jake? Man. We need some tissue. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the overall vision of Bella B's fitness. Mm-hmm. What what does that look like in your head? The overall vision. The vision. Um, what what is it? What is the big? The overall vision is just to be able to be a safe haven for women, a space where we all can come together. And Say that loud for the people in the back. A safe haven for women. <laughs> well we all you know just can come together despite our background where, where we're where we're from who we are we all can just you know just just come together and bond and not only on a um a physical level but like i said a mental and emotional level too there's so many women that you know that i deal with and that we you know like we're a family that's really what that is like mm-hmm. we're a family Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure like they will vouch all day. Like we're family. It's so many women that I've n- I've haven't even met. I have live stream members from different states. I have women in my 30 day challenge that's in in this state, another state I've never met. But you would think that we've known each other forever because of the bond that we have. Because it's a judgment free zone. Like it, it isn't. We don't care about where you come from. We don't care about your past. Anything like that. It's about building each other up. It's about encouraging each other. It's about feeling like you have somewhere where you can just 
be you. You know, right. it's not a title. You know, I don't I don't need you for anything. But we're coming together to build each other up. You know, we're just supporting and encouraging and motivating. So that's really what I want Bella Beats to be. And that's really what it is. But that's why I wanted to grow to be even more. More women just come in and we just celebrate each other, praise each other, burn calories, build confidence. What is the difference of cardio dance fitness and regular people just in fitness just working out like it's just a different type of fitness that's it like for me we do cardio dance i've never met nobody that don't like to dance have you no okay you Uh know what i'm saying one thing Uh that can always bring people together is music okay music you can if you go to a club you don't know nobody but songs will come on and you know back in the day everybody juking each other you know know what i'm saying like can you yeah yeah, right <laughs> <laughs> you know that's one thing that can really bring people together is music and dancing and i and for what i do i feel like that's what it is you know like we get together the music come on we just cutting up everybody's smiling they having fun and I, for me that's why i think that what i'm doing is so successful because a lot of times people don't want to wake up and just be like okay i'm about to go personal training i'm about to go work out i'm about to go work out you know, like it ain't like that. But when you in the class and you in there, and we all like, hey, oh, drop. You know, like making it like a party. Like we just pumping each other up. We just having a great time. I just feel like that's kind of the difference of what it is. Each you're still burning calories, mm-hmm. whether you're burning them lifting weights or you burning them with your natural body weight, and you're just working out and having fun. It's mm-hmm. just your preference. That's dope. That's dope. Now. I think they got a little insight on how how we work and what everything is. So I would rather go to the to name game. Oh Jesus! Okay. All right. Okay. You, I, I know you know what this is. You were there when I created it. Mm-hmm. So therefore, you shouldn't have no problem getting through it. Don't. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. I'm gonna take care of you, okay. but you are gonna have to be keep your head on the swivel. Okay. Okay. All right. You ready? As ready as I'm gonna be. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> Boys to men. Favorite. Love. Unconditional. August 6, 2016. Eternity. Aww. <laughs> Jake, where's the damn tissue? <laughs> Creep. School. <laughs> Amani Mariah Layla Headaches <laughs> I'm so happy you said My that babies. Cause yeah that's our babies But god damn it the first word I can <laughs> Headaches Give me some That's what I'm talking about Passion Life Black sheep One word answer. Misunderstood. The reason why I'm let me pause the game right quick. Pause the game. The reason why I say black sheep because it's bigger than that. You always felt like you were the black sheep of the family, mm-hmm. and I kept hearing that. I kept hearing you say that, and I understood it. But and that negative is a positive. You turned it into That's a positive. That's it took me a minute to respond because in my first mind, and it, it's, it's my, it's the, it's the broken, I think it's like the broken side where it was like me. Yes. Then I had to catch myself. Yes. Because I'm not that anymore. Um, I used to, I used to always feel like, like I was a black sheep of the family. I was treated different, but it was really because I just was different. And I think that maybe it was just not me not understanding me or my potential or why things are the way that they are so Mm -hmm. now that's why I'm saying like for me a black sheep really doesn't have to be a negative thing Mm -hmm. because me being a black sheep has brought me to where I am now and I'm claiming to be different so why not accept it so yeah yeah. you see how I did that Mm -hmm. I told you I was going to take care of you boo Mm -hmm. I I told you bae I told you I was going to take care you see how I spun that see how I spun that shit alright let's uh, let's play the game let's play the game again real friends One word. One word. Real friends. Uh, um, I don't know. 
it, you got me there. I don't know. Family. That's all I could say for that. We got two more. Okay. Sacrifices. Survival. Mm. Mm. Last one. You ready? Okay. You ready for this one? I think you know what it is. What? I think you know what it is. Who, Irvin? <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Phoenix. Phoenix. You've evolved. You've grown. You're not who you used to be. So for me to see you from the boy that you were that I met on the party land and we was in the mall <laughs> back in the day to growing up and from when we first started dating to the man that you are now, you've evolved. So I know I keep telling you like this is the year of the Phoenix, but I feel like when I say that it's it's for both of us. We both evolved, we both grown. I think this year will be shifting us in a different direction because of the changes and the growth that we made. So for me in my eyes you I say Phoenix. I'm gonna just use this card to go ahead and wipe my tears. <laughs> God damn, God damn, 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 that was good, girl. Clap it up, clap it up, clap it up, clap it up, floor, clap it up, clap it up. Big Jake, what grade we give her? We always give her a grade. What we what grade we give her on that one, bro? He better say A. Oh, A plus plus. To the max, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. You seen all this. Mm -hmm. You seen everything. Mm -hmm. You seen what I've created. I seen what you created. Mm -hmm. Where do we go from here? Wherever God takes us. That's what you feel? Mm -hmm. I think we just continue to work hard, stay focused, stay motivated, continue to encourage each other, be supportive, understanding, communicate, and that's just what it is. I mean, we don't know where we go from here. We just keep walking the path until we find out. I agree. I agree. Um, this was supposed to happen the way it's supposed to happen. Y'all got to see an insight on my uh, my family, my partner, my road dog, my home, my boo thing, my booty butt cheeks. <laughs> Oh, y'all y'all got to see who y'all got to see who she is and um what she does and see how beautiful she is and see why I ain't going nowhere, you know. Why why I'm why I'm stuck. Cuz she, you know what I'm saying? We won't have a Gotti's world anymore <laughs> if I was to do it. So, but I thank you. I appreciate you. Um everything that you do, I know that your uh supporters, your team, they love you. Um, everybody around you who comes around you or comes in uh, into your energy I know they're going to love you um, Bella Bees is the home that you created and it's going to stay stronger than ever when you actually once this world back up and you know once we get in it mm -hmm. um, God is World Podcast always you know it wouldn't be it wouldn't be here without me but it also wouldn't be built without you. Why you say that? Because you've seen I didn't it. Ask questions. Why you say we ain't got no time. We ain't got no time for that. Okay. We ain't got no time for that. All right. All right but I would just say it, it wouldn't be built without your your love and, and, and your 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 hands as well for keeping me up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, tell everybody how they can get in touch with you. Um, how they the business, all the social medias, boom. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Bella B S Fitness underscore. Um, you can follow me on Instagram on my personal page, which is Almondy Joy A L M O N D E E J O Y Y. Um, niggas stay out her DMs because I'm too, lurking. That too. Um, <laughs> but before. That's where y'all can find me. But before we end, I do just want to take a moment. I know we short on time, but I do just want to tell you thank you for the opportunity to come here. Um, for you to even think of this and just say, babe, let's just do this. It's been a long time. They need to know. You know, so I just want to tell you that. I want to tell you that I am so proud of you. Just to see where you came from. Uh, y'all know where he started. <laughs> 
and what he is now, but to just see you evolve and just grow and become the man that you are. And just for your business, for you to think that it may not go here and then just see how big that it's gotten. It's mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. And for me to be able to, to see that growth from a personal aspect to a business, to just, just seeing you grow from urban or uh, uh, Ty, the baby Ty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you out of order. You out of order. Baby Ty. Oh, shit. Baby Ty to my husband, Urban, to now Gotti. You know, just to see you, I just want to let you know I am proud of you. I'm very proud of you. You're doing absolutely amazing. I'm with you rocking. I'm rolling. Yeah. I'm here. And yeah. just, just keep doing you. I'm proud of you. And I, I see this getting bigger than you can ever imagine. That's what it is. Y'all already know where y'all can find me. Official underscore Y-U-N-G Gotti on IG. Also, Irvin Woods Jr. on Facebook. On YouTube, Gotti's World Media the uh, channel. Please, please subscribe, comment, like. I need them subscriptions so we can get it up. We can get these views up. So when y'all get ready to come over here, all artists, all uh, anybody who want to come over here, well, come up here, talk to me. Y'all views can be boom, booming. And we can, you know what I'm saying, level up together. Um, I want to give a special, 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 special shout out to my photographer, Courtney Jackson. Come here, girl. Come here. Hey, Come girl. on. Come on. She, she, all the dope pictures that you seen me, you know, with El Hitter, everything like that. Uh, my boy LB the Prince and all that. She done them. Come over here. Get in the camera work. Get in here. Look at Go ahead. Shout you out. Shout you out. Yes. Shout you out. Yeah. Shout out. Go ahead. Yo, hey, follow me on Instagram at. P R E T T I underscore M A M I. That's pretty mommy. Um, also follow both my business pages. That's clicks underscore and underscore company and clicks and company photography. So follow me. Follow her. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, she is the, she, man, she got the eye. She got the eye for that that, that camera work. Yeah. That camera work is, is is the real deal. Don't forget about her flyers. Oh, Look, the flyers! The flyers, the, the flyers is off this okay. chain. So when you see when you see everybody on these flyers, y'all know who did them. That's the face to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Envion Studios, thank you for giving me a home. Shout out to my engineer, Big Jake. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my engineer, man. One of the dopest. Um, man, this how we gonna end the year. This how I'm going to start the year. With you, with this interview, so when y'all see it, y'all know what this is. All right? Okay. It's the Gotti's World Podcast. I got my girl, my girl, my boo, Shatoria Woods, Bella B's Fitness. We out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the anthem, put your hand up that you shoot with, count your loot with, push the pool stick in your new crib, same hand that you...